You are now listening to The Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick, episode 18, Adrenal Fatigue and Burnout. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com. All right, welcome to the Real Health Podcast. As always, I am your host, Dr. Taylor Crick, and this week I'm excited to talk to you about something that, you know, we've talked about in past episodes and really been focusing on in the office, and that is our stress. But talking today in particular about those little glands that sit right on top of our kidneys called the adrenals, okay? And if you can understand the function of the adrenals, you can understand how your adrenal glands can become damaged or become burnt out or become imbalanced, you're going to be one step closer to understanding the root cause of a lot of health issues today, like depression, fatigue, low sex drive. Uh, these things are all signs that the adrenals have become damaged or have become burnt out. And so if you're joining us for the first time, this is the Real Health Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Taylor Crick. I'm the owner and operator of Align Utah, Salt Lake's premier wellness clinic, focusing on corrective, spinal corrective chiropractic care, uh, focusing on nutrition, focusing on detox, focusing on weight loss, and looking at it all through the five essentials of maximized living. But when you start to look at the way the body was designed, start to look at what causes a healthy person to become ill or to become sick, and you start to look at, you know, functional medicine and functional nutrition and, and looking really tr- for true causes of disease, what you'll notice and what I've found is that there are three main areas that I focus on in my clinical uh, practice and, and also just, you know, through the podcast and through doing consults with people and things like that, just looking at your health. And the number one, the first and most important thing is your spine and your nervous system. You have to have a healthy spine. You have to have a healthy nervous system. That includes things like brain health, keeping your brain nice and healthy and active. But spinal hygiene is the most overlooked aspect of healthcare, taking good care of your spine, getting regular chiropractic care to maintain joint mobility, to maintain the, you know, decreased subluxation in the spine, to maintain range of motion. All these things are so incredibly important. And, you know, in some other episodes, we talk about how the spine plays a role in things that, you know, aren't neck pain, aren't back pain, aren't headaches, but actually plays a role into things like adrenal fatigue. And, and we trace the pathways of how, you know, joint mobility or loss of joint, uh, joint restriction, loss of joint mobility can actually affect things going all the way to the adrenals. Okay. And so that is the most important thing is a healthy spine, a healthy nervous system, a healthy brain. The next most important thing, in my opinion, is a healthy gut. Okay. So go back in our past episodes. You can listen to the gut health workshop, different things on leaky gut, but that is incredibly important. First, you have to have a healthy spine because that's controlling everything else. Then you have to have a healthy gut because that is also affecting almost everything else. Your overall immune system, your serotonin levels, your thyroid function, the gut has to be functioning well and has to be healthy. So healthy spine and nervous system, number one. Number two, healthy gut. But number three, what we're going to talk about today, healthy hormones. Okay. And so we've been talking about stress and why stress is, you know, such a, such a devastator to our health, what it does to decrease, you know, our body's ability to just heal and function. Uh, But the, the reason that it does that, the reason why stress is such a killer is because it throws off your hormones so much. And the adrenal glands that we're going to talk about today, the adrenal glands are literally the workhorses of your endocrine system or of your hormone system. Okay, so I want to explain this, you know, what the players are of the endocrine system. Okay, so you have the the very top one, the very uh, leader of it all. You can imagine if you had a corporation, this would be the CEO this is called your hypothalamus, okay? So your hypothalamus is telling everybody what to do. It's in charge. It's running the show. It writes the checks, right? Okay, that's the hypothalamus. The next one down would be called the pituitary gland. Now, this would be like a manager, okay? So this is somebody that's communicating 
out to the workers. That is the pituitary gland, and it's got to keep the team in track. It's got to tell all the workers what to do, things like that. So some of the workers are things like the thyroid, okay? So that's a big one for, for hormones. The pineal gland, that's another big one. The pancreas, the testicles and the ovaries for your sex hormones, and the adrenals, okay? So your pineal gland regulates your sleep cycles. So that's something called melatonin is the most common hormone we think of when we think of our sleep cycles. Your thyroid gland controls energy production. It controls weight loss or weight gain, temperature, things like that. Your ovaries produce reproductive hormones and also control tissue repair. Your testicles produce reproductive hormones and does tissue repair as well. So that's in men. Pancreas regulates blood sugar. Okay, so all these things along with the adrenals secrete hormones and your body, in order for your body to be healing and functioning properly, all these hormones have to work well in conjunction with each other. Okay, so this is incredibly, incredibly important. And you can go back and listen to our stress health workshop. We talk about a couple more detailed things like pregnenolone steel, which is where your body is actually going to take the building blocks of your important hormones and use it to create more stress hormones. So if you're too stressed, you're creating too much stress hormones, your body is actually going to take the building blocks away from testosterone, away from other hormones that you might now be low in because you're producing too much cortisol or stress hormone. But the adrenal glands, the adrenal glands are really the workhorses, okay? So the adrenals are just two, they're about walnut-sized glands located just above the kidneys, okay? So they sit on the kidneys, and each of your adrenal glands has three layers. So I'm just going to do some brief background on what these layers do, and as you're hearing these functions, you realize how incredibly important they are to your overall health. So the outer layer's main job is the regulation of salts, okay? So that's your electrolytes, okay? We've all heard that term because we've seen Gatorade commercials and things like that, but the electrolytes are really just salts that are in your body. Really, really important for your blood, your blood pressure, and your body's acidity levels, okay? So that's really, really important. Your blood pressure, your water retention, your salts, uh, and your body's acidity levels. That's the outer layer of the adrenal glands. Then there's a middle layer that primarily controls blood sugar, okay, which is really, really important through cortisol, but it also is in charge of the stress response, okay? So that's cortisol. That it controls your blood sugar, but it controls your stress response and your inflammation levels, okay? It also is going to control how well cells use hormones from other glands, okay? So an example of that is by regulating your cortisol levels, it's affecting how well cells are using other hormones. So an example is thyroid hormone. So you could have perfectly normal thyroid levels. If you go in for a thyroid test, they tell you your levels are normal. But if your adrenals are not working properly, you could have symptoms of low thyroid, such as fatigue or weight gain. And this can happen even if your thyroid's perfectly healthy because your cells are not using those thyroid hormones. So really, a thyroid condition might be what's causing your symptoms, but adrenal dysfunction can lead to fatigue, weight gain, depression, just like thyroid disease can. So these things work together, but that's coming from the middle layer of your adrenal glands. The outer or the inner layer, excuse me, the inner layer works in conjunction with the ovaries and the testicles and it makes the sex hormones used in reproduction like estrogen and testosterone. The inner layer is also going to help with tissue repair and immune function. So just from these little walnut-sized glands that weigh about the weight of three to four paper clips each, you're controlling a lot of your major and important health functions just from these adrenal glands. The thing with the adrenals is that kind of like our bodies, you know, if you've heard the latest research on multitasking, it basically says it doesn't work, right? So the more that you, the more tasks you try to do at the same time, the worse that you do with any of them. Well, that is the exact same thing for your adrenal glands. The more demands that are placed on them at any one time, the more apt they are to move into survival mode. And when your adrenal glands move into survival mode, that's when you're going to start to store fat around the midsection. That's when you're going to start to have fatigue and have weight gain and have depression and start to have the early signs of adrenal syndrome. And so adrenal syndrome 
which can also be referred to as adrenal exhaustion. Sometimes you'll hear adrenal fatigue or you'll hear adrenal burnout, which is complete, complete fatigue. You know, that is, you know, it can range in a degree of severity from just mild dysfunction to a complete failure of the adrenal glands. That's known as Addison's disease. If you know anybody that has Addison's disease, it can be debilitating. And all those functions of the adrenals, somebody with Addison's is going to have problems with all those things. They're going to have rapid, rapid weight gain or weight loss because their body has problems regulating the electrolytes, re- regulating the water uh, retention. And so somebody will lose, you know, 10, 15 pounds of water weight, literally sometimes within a couple minutes. I've had patients, you know, post adjustment that will lose ha- uh, 30 pounds or not 30 pounds, 10 pounds of body weight in 30 minutes after an adjustment. And it's all water weight. They have trouble repairing tissues. They have trouble getting sick too often. They know somebody that has Addison's disease knows their limits because they know that if they go into what's called an Addisonian crisis, they know that they're going to be bedridden for a while. So they know their limits because they've, they've hit them before and they know that the adrenals just can't handle that. So that's a total, uh, total failure of the adrenal glands. But e- even a minor impairment in their function is going to have a negative impact on the entire body. So what's the really big concern is a chronic disruption. So chronic disruption over time, you just keep on burning out the adrenal. So when we say that the adrenals are like the workhorse, of the endocrine system, picture, you know, riding a horse or, or say, you know, you're in a carriage and, and you have two horses pulling you. Those are your two adrenals and you want to just go as fast as possible. So you just keep whipping and whipping and whipping those horses, whipping and ho- those horses. They keep going fast, but eventually horses can't go forever, right? Neither can humans, neither can adrenal glands. So eventually those horses are going to burn out. And that's exactly what happens with the adrenals is that if you just keep whipping them, over time, that can undermine immunity and metabolism and lead to adrenal fatigue and adrenal burnout. Okay, so some of the most common symptoms of adrenal stress, because a lot of people are thinking, you know, you're going to hear these symptoms and think, man, that sounds like me. But if you don't know for sure, then, you know, keep listening. But all these symptoms are going to sound like you and they're going to sound like everybody you know. But some of the most common symptoms Fatigue, okay, so getting tired often and early, uh, you know, and, or wearing out, getting out of breath, or fatigue during, during random parts of the day, having a midday crash, things like that. Problems with blood sugar regulation and, and, you know, crashes, sugar crashes can be an adrenal problem. Depression, uh, craving sweets, okay, so that's often, you know, going along with something like crashes in the middle of the day, so craving sweets. Decreased sex drive, low libido, huge, huge, huge thing caused by adrenal fatigue and adrenal burnout. Insomnia, sleep problems. So cortisol and melatonin, two of the biggest adrenal hormones that are measured, uh, greatly regulate your sleep cycles. And if you do not have good sleep, you cannot possibly expect those hormones to be working well. You can't possibly expect to lose weight that you want, and you can't possibly expect to reset your adrenals if your sleep is thrown off. So insomnia is a a really common symptom. Poor memory is another one. Anxiety, uh, PMS, having, you know, a lot of menstrual cramping or having, you know, mood swings during your premenstrual uh, cycle. Weakened immune response, so inability to, to heal from infections, recurrent infections, unexplained nervousness or irritability. That's one. So you can be what's called wired and tired. Okay, so you go from wired and then you go to really, really tired. Um, inability to lose or gain weight, joint and muscle pain. These are all signs that you've had adrenal stress. They say that adrenal fatigue is the most underdiagnosed condition in healthcare. A lot of times the first, a lot of times the first sign that comes on is actually persistent fatigue. Okay. So how many people, if you went out and polled people and said, Hey, are you tired all the time? How many people are going to say yes right away? An overwhelming majority of people. So that's the first sign is persistent fatigue. That's usually accompanied by an associated mood disorder. So by anxiety, by depression, by something that's affecting your mood. As the adrenals become increasingly exhausted, as they just get more and more added to their plate, they fail in their ability to cope with other stresses, and that further causes more adrenal exhaustion. So the scary thing with the adrenals is that it is a vicious cycle 
that keeps going. And unless that cycle is broken, the fatigue keeps getting worse and worse and worse. So that's why adrenal fatigue can become so devastating is because it can start off as a minor problem, but then it just keeps going, okay? And so what happens is first you get stressed, and so this is a cycle, so I want you to picture this like a wheel. First you get stressed, then you get adrenal dysfunction, then your body starts storing fat. The the stored fat changes your appetite. The changed appetite causes fatigue. The fatigue leads to depression. The depression leads to stress. And the stress leads to adrenal dysfunction. And it keeps going and going and going. So that's a little bit more about you know, adrenal fatigue, adrenal burnout, what that actually means. And, you know, maybe you've heard those symptoms and you think, well, that sounds a lot like me. Maybe you've had, you know, an inability to to lose weight for a while and you've also, your sleep has been off and your sex drive just isn't what it used to be. Maybe you've been diagnosed with low low thyroid or low testosterone or, you know, you've had something, some signs of this, but nobody's ever put their finger on it that it is adrenal stress and adrenal burnout. And you want to know why? Well, everybody should have an adrenal stress test, in my opinion, if you think that this is what's going on. There's a lot that you can find out there, you know, on podcasts like this or a quick Google search. And you can find a million different supplements that are going to tell you that they're going to help you with your symptoms. But unless you've tested something, you don't know where you fall. So one of the things that I suggest is if you think that you're dealing with this, if you have, you think you have problems with the adrenals, you want to support them, don't just reach for a supplement. You know, we have two supplements here in the office. One's called Adrenal Calm. The other's called Adrenal Energy. And, you know, based on your symptoms, you might know which of those two that you need. But the only way to really know is to have this tested. The testing is not that hard. It's a salivary testing. You can do it at home. You, you take it four times a day and then you send all the kits in or send all the samples in to, uh, to the lab and they, the results get sent back to us. But what it does is it shows it's a brief, you know, window into each patient's core state of health, you know, how their hormones are functioning. So it tests cortisol rhythms with DHEA. So cortisol and DHEA, those are two of your adrenal hormones that the ratio between cortisol and DHEA is incredibly important to literally almost every function of your body. Too much or too little can either speed things up or slow down processes in your body to, to literally almost slow them down to a complete halt. Healing and functioning, important processes, cortisol, rhythm, and DHEA. So that determines, that can actually help determine the stage of adrenal fatigue. Is this early adrenal fatigue? Is this later? Is this, you know, something that I've been dealing with or you've been dealing with for the last 10 years? Or is it something that's just starting and we can nip it in the bud before it gets worse? Cortisol and DHEA, it's going to measure those throughout the day. It's also going to measure your sex hormones, your sex hormone in insufficiency. It's going to look at progesterone, testosterone, and the different estrogens, the estradiols, the different sex hormones there. And then it's also going to look at melatonin and nighttime cortisol. And that helps evaluate sleep problems to find out how your hormones are functioning. But the reason that this is so important is because this is a 24-hour test your hormones work in rhythms, okay? That's incredibly important to know, and that's why your adrenals can be so important is that they regulate and control these rhythms, okay? So the, the best example is like the circadian rhythm, which is your sleep cycles, and your body produces hormones like melatonin at the same time each night based with your circadian rhythm and based also on the lighting, light pollution, and, and you know, when things get dark, melatonin is the darkness hormone, so your body's going to release those. So what this test is going to do is throughout the day, measure your rhythms to find out if cortisol spikes at a time when it's not supposed to. If melatonin spikes in the morning and cortisol drops, you're going to be really, really tired in the morning rather than waking up with energy and then getting tired at the end of the night. So if you're, you're somebody that works works a night job, you work a swing shift, you have sleep problems, you have low testosterone, you've had inability to gain or lose weight, you've had problems with blood sugar regulation, which, you know, it might sound like you because that does sound like an overwhelming majority of our population today. This is something that I would absolutely encourage you to get tested. 
The lab that we work with is called BioHealth Lab. You can actually go online and just type in BioHealth Lab Adrenal Stress Profile, and you're going to get quite a bit of information on that lab testing and look it up and see if you think that's for you. Another thing that I would recommend after getting it tested, a book that I would absolutely recommend to anybody who thinks that they might be dealing with this is by Alan Christensen. He's a, a naturopathic doctor that I, I follow very closely. I really like a lot of his work and a lot of his things when it comes to Hashimoto's thyroiditis, a lot of hormone things, and then also he's a genius when it comes to your adrenals. And he has a great book out there called The Adrenal Reset Diet. So that's something that you should look into. What it is is cycling, specifically cycling proteins and carbs to reset your adrenal rhythms, to reset your adrenal cycles, okay? So that along with decreasing toxicity, along with decreasing your stress, you know, you, you can't address your adrenals and still keep having the same stress, okay? So go back and listen to the past episodes to learn how you can decrease your stress so that you can stop whipping the horses, stop burning out those adrenals, but once you've done that, then maybe it's time for you to grab the Adrenal Reset Diet. So that's by Dr. Alan Christensen. I'll put the link in the show notes, and you can pick that book up, and you can figure out what's going on. But that's what I would recommend. Number one, you, you have to address your stress. If, you, if any of this sounded familiar to you, if any of this sounded like you might think, yeah, that's me, I've got some adrenal issues, they need to be addressed, you know, the number one thing... The number one thing that I can suggest is get it tested. Get it tested. I, I mean, I'm not a huge, actually I am a huge fan of testing. You know, we do all of our spinal care based on x-rays and there's a lot that you can do, um, on with muscle testing and things like that, but nothing is more definitive than seeing a value on a lab or seeing a result on an x-ray to know for sure what needs to be done. So that's a big thing is get it tested first off. The testing is not very expensive uh, either to find out, especially for the answers that it gives you. So get it tested first thing. The number two thing that I'd suggest, address your stress. If any of this sounded like you, before you reach for the Adrenal Reset Diet, the book, before you start taking any supplements to support your adrenals, anything like that, you have to start addressing your stress. Stop adding things to your plate uh, start meditating, start focusing on your, your time management, go back and listen to our past episodes to figure out how you can decrease the stress and stop whipping the horses. Then after you've done those two things, after you've evaluated where your levels are at, after you've decreased your stress, you've started taking some action steps as far as decreasing your toxicity, things like that, healing your gut, then start looking at the adrenal Reset Diet by Dr. Alan Christensen. This is something that just like anything else, you know, your body was designed to heal. Your body was designed with an incredible and amazing ability to heal. And as long as you're looking at those three important things that I talked about before, number one, the nervous system, number two, the digestive system, and number three, the endocrine system. Okay. So your spine, your gut, and your hormones, as long as you're looking at all three of those things from a functional standpoint, your body can heal, your adrenals can reset, all of this can be reversed. Now you're gonna have some, some, you know, allostatic load that, that has taken place from some of the damage that's been done, but you can reset, you can heal, you can reverse this. But you gotta start by looking at the adrenals and measuring those hormone levels. So if you're curious, you want to know about more about those measurements, you can find it on our website. You can email us. You can ask us, okay? So that is on our clinic website, www.wealignutah.com. You can find more information there. Find it on the podcast website too, www.realhealthwithdrtaylor.com. There will be a link in the show notes of how to get to our website. You can order these tests. The cool thing about these tests is, you know, say you're listening to this episode and you're in Florida or you're in uh, I don't want to say Canada because I don't know for sure, but you're in California, you're in Texas, and you're curious about this, you can order these tests. We can order these tests for you. The kit will get sent to your house. You will send the information into the lab. The results will get sent back to me, and we can schedule a consultation via phone or via email. But the important thing is that you get tested. You find out exactly what's going on. Make sure you stay tuned to the podcast as we've got some exciting episodes 
coming down the pike, coming your way. We're going to keep looking for the causes of disease, keep showing you everything that you can do to maximize your chances of real health and give yourself the best opportunity to build the strongest and healthiest version of yourself. So stay tuned. Once again, Real Health Podcast. This is Dr. Taylor Crick signing off, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Thank you for listening to the Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com.